old school bodybuilding clothing company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Welcome back to Live With. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today we have a very special guest. He's a superhero of sorts. They call him the Batman. The man I'm talking about is Aaron Baker. Welcome to the show. Brother Dave, brother Dave. What's up, man? Thanks we got for Batman me. here. I'm so excited, man. I remember, you know, <laughs> reading in the magazines back when I was really getting into it in the like late 80s, early 90s, mm-hmm. and I really hadn't started competing yet. And, man, I would see pictures of you. Uh, you'd have those, that Batman costume on, and I was like, man, that's what I want to look like. I mean, you man, were like a superhero I, of sorts, you know? I a, appreciate a real life it, superhero. Man. Thank you. That's that. You got to have fun with it, man. That's what I believed, and that's what I was doing. Um, I had to figure out some kind of way to get my name remembered while I was coming up the ranks. <laughs> and uh, being, a, being a Batman uh, aficionado, that, that helped me have a little bit of fun with it coming yeah. up. I, and the funny thing is, the Batman that you were was not the Batman that the kids know today. You were the Michael Keaton Batman, right, back in the day? Well, well you know, right around 89, <laughs> Dave, when um, I was in the uh, competing uh, in the amateur um, national level yeah. ranks, aspiring to turn professional, Michael Keaton uh, came out with the new darker version of Batman. Yeah. So there was a whole slew of uh, right. Batman t-shirts, earrings, mm-hmm. all sorts of memorabilia, collector's items. So I had a ball wearing different <laughs> Batman t-shirts every day, uh, you know, and matching the socks and having yeah. fun with it and doing photo shoots and awesome. Batman earring. And it just, that and guest posing as Batman, just, right. I just had a ball with it, you know. I went out to, um, Golds. I think it was the first time it was 1994 and mm-hmm. I went into the gym and I mean you didn't have a Batman costume on in the gym but you used to wear <laughs> those tight hot skin outfits and unitards and I'm like this guy yeah. is unbelievable you were probably one of the most impressive in the gym bodybuilders because you were always lean you had the great structure and you would wear these outfits like that like I mean you, everyone had to look at you when you were training it was unbelievable <laughs> Thank you. I was playing superhero. Yeah. You know, that that gave me a lot of uh, pleasure. I was I was getting to just have fun with the physique. You know, right. so many people, everyone's got their own style. You yeah. know what I mean? Some people love to be covered from head to toe in I gray know. sweats and crew neck and hoodies. And, you know, that's your bag. Cool. <laughs> but me, I just I don't know. I just like to play superhero. That was one of the things that inspired me as a youth hmm. um, and really introduced my my naturally artistic eye to you know to physiques it's like okay there are real people that look like that right what who got you into bodybuilding aaron i don't i don't even know the story to be honest with you well my older brother larry um got a he ordered a joe weeder 110 pound weight set we all had that yeah and uh and then he began to scrounge up every rusty, ugly <laughs> weight plate that he can find in the neighborhood. And he just began to uh, work out yeah. and he drastically transformed his physique in like right. a year. Oh, wow. And uh, he's shorter than I am, lighter bone structure. You know, but the genetics were there and he right. developed a nice physique. Did he compete? They gave him a nickname. And of course, I used to uh, sneak and read his muscle magazines and he would always arrange them just right where he'd he'd know that i had been there and he'd go go mess with my my magazines and i'd I'd, okay okay and as soon as he'd leave i'd be looking at the articles of uh robinson and zane and you know and and and, you know you name it the people of the heyday who was the physique that you admired most like who did you like look up to and say like i remember lou ferrigno always like struck a chord with me but who did you look at and say that's what i want to look like well, as a, a like a fourteen or fifteen year old young brown bodybuilder, <laughs> first guy that caught my eye was was Muhammad Macaway because he looked a little like me. You know what I mean? Mm. And I thought this guy was so impressive, yeah, and so shredded and so uh, majestic. There was something majestic about his poses sure. that that were captured even in the still shots. Mm. 
Yeah. This guy was like a little pharaoh out there, you know, and but it wasn't very long before Robbie Robinson caught my eye. I was going to say, I think of Robbie Robinson when I think of your physique, yeah. And oh, oh my goodness, man. Even today, there are things about his physique that, that inspired me. I mean, I always wanted hamstrings like Robbie. There are things that, hmm. you know, come on. We want everything like Robbie. We want biceps like Robbie. We want lats we like We want to live as long as Robbie. He's unbelievable, the guy. He's like the, uh, incredible. I mean, he's still doing it at 70-something years old. Exactly. And interestingly enough, Dave, I read a lot of his uh, articles and, and studied what he said and adapted his type of training, right. um, the squeezing, the deliberate contractions, the full range of motion, the taking your time, yeah. uh, the mind muscle link, the pain barrier, things they don't even write about nowadays. Um, were, you a, were you a volume trainer or were you like more of a heavy trainer? I was always in between. I believed in heavy weights and I was trained to use heavy weights because right. when I first uh, I started training in my bedroom with the television on <laughs> you know, watching Leave it to Beaver, you know, <laughs> now you're dating yourself. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It, it's out now. Man. That's before me. You got to be. Are you 60 yet? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. What? What? When? You, how old are you now? 60. Oh, you just turned 60. That's yeah, incredible. Yeah. And you. You're another guy who doesn't age. I, I, I've been interviewing a lot of guys from who are just turned hitting that 60 Mario. No, mm -hmm. no one looks like they're 60 anymore. Romano is like 60. He doesn't look 60. You know, it's oh incredible. yeah, we we had a good time recently. Yeah, I, I know John. No, he it. doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. You know, and Richie's right behind. I mean, he's Barry's right there. Yeah, yeah. Still looks like a kid, man. You Unbelievable. Know. It's the ice. I equate it. You know, people say you know, obviously steroids are no good for you, but I think that as bodybuilders, we really lived you know, a pretty clean lifestyle in the sense that we ate well, we took care of ourselves, we didn't have a lot of body fat. And you know what? You don't get the wear and tear on your body when, you, when you're lean and when you work out and you exercise and you're in fresh air and you, you know, we don't have a lot of stress from jobs. We're not working, you know, you know these crazy nine to five jobs. So I, I just right. think that the, by and far, bodybuilding does lead itself to be a healthier lifestyle, even with the addition of the performance enhancement stuff. By and large, yes. I mean, even when, when I first saw Robbie in the gym and I talked to people that were close to him, I found out he barely had dessert. You know, he's, he would right. have a little tiny piece of dessert every so often, but yeah. rarely. Yeah. And he just had the lifestyle. Right. And I'm thinking, wow, he really eats like that. That's why he looks. Yeah. I don't eat desserts that, either. I don't know why. I, I'm well, just not well, into sugars. I don't. I don't like. I don't feel good when I eat simple sugars. And I have a fast metabolism. I can eat whatever I want, but I just right. don't eat sugars. You know. Well, strangely enough, neither do I. I yeah. mean, I tell people, look, I can go months without having a piece of dessert. It's yeah. just, if I want it, it's there. Yeah. And if I have it, I have it, and then I go on about my business. Right. Right. You know, you if I have cookies like in a body in the moment? house, they will last because. I just don't need to go and have one every day. Sure. And I'm, I'm grateful for that because there was a time when, you know, um, I would have, I'd be more inclined to have desserts. I think deprivation had something yeah, to do with that. I was going to say dieting leads you to want to eat everything in sight, especially when oh, you, yeah. you were in Venice. I mean, Venice had the best places to eat. So when you'd get <sighs> off a show, I would go out yeah. to Venice just to go eat. You know? <laughs> no, right, right. right. No one realized oh. the Cheesecake Factory started in Venice. It, it was that was the first place it was. That was the first time I had ever eaten there in the '90s. I was like, "Holy mackerel, this place is unbelievable!" You know, crazy menu, yeah. crazy, and not to mention the firehouse. I mean, of course, the buckwheat pancakes. They mm, they put those yeah. on the map. Bodybuilding and, and breakfasts and all that craziness. Yeah. World renowned now. <laughs> you know. Now, what did you? Were you born in California? I, never even I was born in uh, actually uh, Flint, Michigan. Another Michigan guy. Man, Michigan has a lot of great bodybuilders that came out of there. But, you know, I was a kid, very young, uh, right. born there, then moved to Philadelphia, lived mm -hmm. there for maybe five years or so, right. then moved uh, to North Carolina, where my parents were from. Ah. So I actually grew up in North Carolina, southeastern seaboard. Okay. Um, so East Coast guy, um, southern heat and humidity. Yeah, but you know, um, I, I was talking with Ron Love about this. There's a lot of great bodybuilders that came out of Michigan. But Tom Platt. Iris Kyle, you know, Linda oh. Murray. 
Uh, yes. People don't realize there's a lot of transplants out of, out, out of that place. I don't know what's with Michigan, but there was a lot of genetic talent there, I think. Right, right. So. Recently learned that Tom was uh, originally from there. Yeah, uh, so I, from... yeah, he had told me that too. And I was surprised. I even forgot about that until he just reminded me. But there was a lot of people that came out of Michigan that were that were um, bodybuilders, and they just kind of moved to different places in the country. You know, right? Well, you go where the action is. That's right. You know? so how did you, how did you get out to California eventually? Well, I was uh, in the military for four years. Okay. Um, I was an army paratrooper and wow. was stationed overseas. Um, one of the things that the recruiter negotiated with was the <laughs> fact that my last duty station would be in California. Oh, wow. So he could have sent me to Timbuktu. I ended up going to Korea oh, um, wow. as a, as an overseas duty station, but uh -huh. I'm going to California after. So, but by then I was a teenage competitor, um, a competitor on through my, so you my were military a teen in the military, huh? Wow. Yes. How, how would you go right at 18 years old, right out of college, high school? Uh, 17. Wow. Okay. So was right that out a of shock high school. for you? Was that a culture shock for you? It was because, uh, you know, it's an entirely different culture. Yeah. Entirely different culture. But for, it's, it's great for a lot of people. I mean, I, I had parents that cared and, and cared enough to discipline me and, you know, so, but there's lots of people that, that didn't have any type of structure mm. in their lives right. um, or discipline. And so it's a perfect environment for them to, to acquire some. Right. It's, it's the best thing for them, really, sure. um, because, you know, you go out into life thinking it owes you a living, no respect for authority or whatever, right. then, then you learn very rapidly yeah. that uh, the world doesn't work that way. No, no. You know, I went to school my whole life, so I always had no problem taking, uh, you know, uh, direction from authority. But you're right. There's but, a lot of people that they can't handle direction from authority. Right. And, right. Uh, you know. I didn't go to the military. I went to jail, unfortunately, for five months. But, well, I, didn't, but, I, but I didn't have a problem there because I don't, I don't have a problem taking orders from authority. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm, and I'm actually good like that because I like to be told what to do sometimes because I'm, I'm, I'm an ultra focuser. Like, you know, I like discipline, you know? See, you strike me as naturally disciplined yeah. because even your dieting was hardcore. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, I'm like, gee, I wish I had worked with Dave when I yeah. was coming <laughs> Was, were you, did you have problems when you dieted? Was that something that was not on point? Well, actually, I came from the old school where you dieted so hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The low carb di uh, diets right. uh, when I was um, a teenager. Okay. And so you stripped it down and then you carved up. And right. so the science was changing um, as the sport evolved and, right. and it was a lot healthier, you know. And, you know, as the adage goes, if I knew then what I know now. You know, um, but dieting wasn't a problem um, even now. That's why we can eat, sure. you know, cleanly and have a nice, healthy lifestyle, right. enjoy it without feeling deprived. Right. But I, you know, I think like I, when I think of Aaron Baker and I see you on stage, I mean, you had like some of the best genetic gifts out there. We'll talk about your, your, your conscious history in a minute. But I Thank felt you. like your consistency wasn't there. And I think that that hurt you a little bit. To be honest, that's true. That's true. I. Uh, one of my best conditions was, uh, I think it was the 94 Ironman. Yes, um, you were great there. And, and I was right behind Vince and uh, Chris. Chris Cormier, yeah. Right. And uh, so it was, I had entered one uh, IFBB competition. I, I believe it was the night of the champions the, the year before. Right. But after to be honest, the after WBF, the, the WBF right. Um, right. fiasco, I was so enamored to enter any IFBB show. I just jumped on in, mm -hmm. you know, and it wasn't really ready, but gotcha. it's, they opened the gate and I ran in and was, was lost in the mix. Mm -hmm. But the following year, I really worked my butt off to get in condition. Yeah. And, um, I thought you, you were know, better really, in 95 even. Say again. I think you were great in 95. I remember those shows that you and Flex Wheeler were going one, two oh. in those shows. And a lot Miami of people Pro thought you, you had him oh. on a couple of those yeah. shows. Yes. Miami Pro Show and uh, Iron Man 95. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could have won one, those shows, you know. Go figure. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, that, I'm that saying, one comes when you, up. When you can say I could beat Flex Wheeler on stage, I mean, that, that's, that's an accomplishment that not many people could, could, could even hold up there, you know. Flex is phenomenal, you know. Um, you were phenomenal and, and, then, though, too. And, and 
I look at pictures and I go, wow, you know, I, and I can appreciate um, all of it. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But my point is, um, even though we're fierce competitors, I, I think you are, you start out as fans and yeah. you always, you'll always be a fan. I mean, mm. I can look at pictures back. I can look at pictures of you mm. and look at pictures of what's and go, wow, that's crazy. Sean Ray posted one. And there's always still that deep appreciation sure. for what it took to, to, to reach that pinnacle. Right. I thought I had done the job that day. You know, I thought I, I deserved I it. I think a lot of people did. You know, Flex but, had a lot of momentum. You still had that stigma of the WBF, which we'll talk about ooh, in a little bit. That definitely was working against you big time. Without question. You know, with, if, without obviously question. if Weider wasn't around, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But, you know, he was. And yeah. so. Yeah. And Wayne was, you know, there as yeah, well. But, yeah. you know, but, uh, you know, hats off to Flex. He's he's I look at some of the things that after I retired and look at his physique and what he went on to. And it's just stellar. I yeah, mean, it's still mind blowing to yeah. the day. So there's an appreciation, you know, always, you know, for that. When you but I did think USA, I had that one. <laughs> Aaron, when you won the USA in 1990, I mean, yeah. You were spectacular. I mean, as for an amateur guy, I mean, you were a pro basically on that amateur stage. You mm. know, uh, it was. I mean, what do you? What did it take for you to get to that point where, hey, Aaron Baker is Mister USA? I mean, was that a tough year for you? Did you work hard? What What do you think changed over the course of the, that last year into the USA, where you were able to kind of elevate yourself to that to that level where you were able to win? Thank you. That's a good question. Um, well. First of all, uh, that was a drug tested year. I remember that, yeah. Um, but before that, to answer your question, I had two or three years scratching up the, uh, the amateur ranks. Yeah. Trying to get my name out there, you know, and it, it seemed like every national show I went to or state show or something, there were people that were already known. Now, I didn't grow up in California. You no. know, I, during the California, you know, went up against Troy Zuccolato. He won right. the overall right. heavyweight that year. I won the, um, I think it was light heavyweights or middleweights or something like that. Light yeah. heavyweights. Um, you know, I always seem to be going up against the name game. So that, uh, aside, in addition to diligence, I think that's uh, where the Batman thing came. The first guest posing that I was hired for, I thought, hey, why don't I have a little bit of fun? Right. Why don't I do something to make myself memorable while having that fun? Smart. Um, but coming up the ranks, doing the uh, nationals, doing the North American, doing the circuit coming up. Mm. Um, and a lot of times I got kicked in the teeth. There are times I've got lost in the lineup. Sure. And I tell aspiring young bodybuilders, look, my first competition, I probably placed 13th you know, out of 22. <laughs> so that's, you know, but the next time, you right. know. Back then though, people don't realize sometimes it was hard to make the top 15. They didn't they used to do an elimination round where if there yeah. was, cause there was so many people in the class <laughs> that they would, they would do like a comparison and then yeah. they would call out the top 15 names and everyone else yeah. went home. You yeah, didn't even I get know, to do prejudging. And a lot of times guys never made the top 15. No. And, and it was so sad too. It's like yeah, okay. no one cared. Now they're like, oh, everyone's got to get a trophy and everyone's got to yeah, post. Exactly. Back then they're like, sorry, buddy, see you later, man. They pat pat you in the head and they go, you can get dressed now. We'll see you next you know, year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I never was out of the top fifteen. Do so you me either? Yeah, yeah. Thank but God. I saw those guys. I felt bad for them, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. All yeah. right, so you, so you're coming up the ranks. You're yeah. you know you placed in second the year before. People right. are talking about Aaron Baker. I remember the, the talk in the magazines was he's the next guy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, now you have pressure on you, right? Because now everyone wants to see what you're going to bring to that stage. How did that right. year go? The prep, you know, who helped you? How did you make that happen? It went well. Still, back in, in those days, it was just me. I mean, I worked a nine to five. And, uh, you know, I, at one point I was uh, an undercover, you know, uh, yeah undercover security agent you know and i would walk the the department store you know oh really with, uh, oh that's cool that's fun with with uh, my my bag and and there would be voices coming from my bag you know and people would walk up and go you're security aren't you and I'm like, Me? No, <laughs> not at all plus <laughs> just you were don't huge. take anything you were huge you to too what did they think uh, you know you were enormous back then too, oh yeah probably. oh yeah actually uh laura Craval uh started working in the, the makeup department. Oh, no way. That's funny. And, uh, and so she was working to make uh, the makeup and I was doing security. 
and she trained at Gold's gym. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like this moment of, hey, don't don't you work out at Gold? <laughs> so that now, interestingly enough, we both won California that year. Oh, that's we won funny. like uh, Southern California and then the California, and then you know we went on to place in national uh, competitions right. and win national competitions. Sure. And uh, so it was, it was an exciting time. It was a, a humble beginning. Yeah. Um, but I look back on that with, uh, with fondness and, uh, you know. Is that your greatest victory or, or was it one of the pro wins your greatest victory? Well, uh, USA was the greatest victory, you know, because it was you know, all mine and it couldn't be taken away. It couldn't right. be uh, like wrestled from you or anything like that. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I had a lot of drive coming in. I, I felt good. I felt like, okay, this is going to be my year. I'm, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to keep getting better and better. And then there came the, uh, the climate change with the uh, anabolics testing. Right. So they did it in the IFBB, and then they decided this year all of the national level uh, qualifiers right. are going to be tested. So what did you do? So what did I do? Yeah. Well, I knew a guy that was a, a practitioner of Chinese herbs. Okay. And this guy, he would always tell me, ah, yeah, you don't need that stuff. You know, you need to be on Chinese herbs. And <laughs> run. you know, they're tonics that'll, that'll build your blood up and da, 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 you know? Yeah. And so when this, this, uh, this turn of events occurred, I checked him out. Right. So how did it work out? It worked out great. Mm -hmm. I mean, my blood was so clean. Um, very healthy, lots of energy. Right. I grew, but at the same time, if I had known what I knew a few years later about eating, about consuming calories, about uh -huh. filling out, about right. I would have looked even better. So were you were you really natural for that show? I mean, did you? I mean, because I know a oh, lot yeah. of guys uh, took things to try to beat the test mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Did you? All do I it took legit. All I took was uh, Chinese herbs. Wow. And, and you looked it was, good at that show, really good. Like, thank you. Like, things that have been around for years. And, and also, uh, Neil Spruce, to yeah. his credit, uh, did my diet that year. Wow. And um, we carved up slowly and mm -hmm. in retrospect. Yeah. If I'd have continued, yeah. you know, would have been even better. But, you know, it takes time to learn your body. And going yeah. from an old school type of regimen. Yeah into something new where you can actually come in bigger and fuller and, and more healthier. You're still going to hurt. I, I tell people all the time, I said, look, if there was no steroids in bodybuilding, the same champions would be the same champions, I said, because they have genetic, something going on genetically that is just makes them better than everyone else. And I, I think Ronnie would have been Mr. Olympia still. Yeah. I think you would have still been as good as you are. You proved it. You know, when the WBF drug test, and we'll talk about that in a minute, you were the oh, best yeah. guy there because you obviously probably needed the drugs the least, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so well, you win the USA, okay? You get drug tested, mm -hmm. you pass the test because you're drug free. Obviously, a right. lot of these other guys couldn't do that. <laughs> and then, you know, here you have the opportunity. You, you got an IFBB pro card, you can go into the IFBB and compete, but you don't take, you don't go that route. You get approached by Tom Platts and Vince McMahon. Right. Who are starting it? Vince is starting this WBF organization, bodybuilding right. organization. They're throwing out big contracts and and they're flying guys in. How, how did they uh, how did they approach you? Tell us how that all went down. Well, we were wooed. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it was a great feeling. And I mean, come on, Tom Platts, an icon in this sport, and we all love Tom anyway. He yeah. had trained at uh, Gold's Venice. Um, for a time in world gym and, and was just a stellar guy, gentleman, right. um, you know, very, very, um, forthcoming, you mm -hmm. know, just, just a good cat. Sure. Um, so he began to approach different people. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was in charge. He was the, li the, the liaison between the office and the talent. Gotcha. So it was his job to help scout out and, and look, and um, I remember when I came to Gold's Gym in, 80, in 85, he was still training there. Hmm. And Tony Pearson was training there as well. Right. Um, so they would take us out to lunch, uh, propose what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they wonder, you know, what was, the, what was the appeal? They said, look, we want to make professional bodybuilders household names. Right. Like the wrestlers, like, sure. the, like the football players. We want to have um, a weekly MTV-ish sort of television program. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we, we want to put you guys on the map. We that was right you up your alley too, creatively. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I showed them a, um, a, a guest posing tape of me doing the Batman uh, right. performance. And it had this really crude overhead lighting, <laughs> which worked out perfectly yeah, yeah. because, you know, it just popped. Everything popped. And uh, they loved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, I, and they sent that. Uh, I sent that to them. And um, I, I wish I still had that tape. Oh, man. I'm um, sure it's floating around someplace. So. But they said, OK, this guy's a character. He's exactly what, uh, so, you know, what we need. What was the offer? I mean, there's obviously it was a big monetary draw, too, because you guys were making no money. You know, you were an amateur. You were probably living, exactly. you know, like you said, you were a security guard. So, I mean, what's what are they throwing on the table at you offer wise? Well, well, I was a security agent, which meant I wore no uniform. I just wore, oh, okay. uh, okay. <laughs> I just carried a bag Sorry. in the work. <laughs> you were undercover security. I forgot. And. And I pseudo blended in with the customers. Yeah, I, don't believe, I don't believe that for a second. You stuck out like a sore thumb, probably. But... Oh, of course I did. <laughs> but what, and you so know, what... and people, and you know what, Dave? People what? still stole, and I would tackle them and just like, <laughs> you know, put the cuffs on. That's and it was great. such a spectacle. People would just watch. You that's know, the security fun. footage. That's, that's the video footage I want to see. Yeah. That's a, me too. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, did you really expect to get away? You know? That's crazy. I really was Batman. Yeah. Know? So but, what did Vince um, throw on the table at you to, to make you want to go over to the WBF? Well, here's the thing. As you said, many of us had scratched up. And, and, and literally, in retrospect, it was the best thing for the sport at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, who wouldn't jump at that, that chance? I had no IFBB career. It started career. contracts. Joe Weida had to give out contracts after that. You know? None. And yeah. that was one of the main reasons that uh, he had a problem with Vince McMahon, because for years he had a monopoly on it. Uh, of course. He didn't pay guys. Come on. He had his right. hand-picked few that he would take care of, and, and that was minimal. Yep. And he'd give out uh, magazine uh, pages, spreads and pages yeah. and oh yeah, you'll make a lot of money. Yeah. How about the money you're making that yeah. you could be paying me <laughs> so that I can eat a lot sooner. <laughs> so I can right, pay for my tuna fish and then yeah, thank breast, you, yeah. you know, which is what all you could afford. That's right. Then. That's right. But, but you know what? Um, so Joe Weider, of course, in retaliation began to procure people, anyone that came, you know, in his midst, right. Uh, that had potential. I mean, he signed Paul Dillette. He started snapping right. people up. Did you get approached by Joe to like stay with him? No, Joe, I never had uh, a, a good relationship with Joe. Weird, yeah. Um, by the time I had a meeting with Joe, it was post WBF. Right. And he gave me some line about, you were you were in another federal no no he he didn't even say that he said oh you were in the other magazines I said Joe everybody's in the other yeah, magazines exactly. are you kidding me <laughs> you know but you know my 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 best friend at the time Dave Durth had a contract yeah you no, know you so me, yeah. um so he gave me a line and I realized look not gonna beg you dude right <laughs> you know so what do you think Joe just didn't think you were marketable I don't know how he couldn't I mean you were you were uh, I mean you were Batman come on for God's sakes. I, I won't presume to know what was on his mind, but you know, he was an old school guy and stubborn and right. very used to getting his way. And once he made up his mind right. um, and in retrospect, it, I think about, well, maybe I could have said this if I'd have known that that's what I would have gotten. I thought for sure, you know, right. I'm like, dude, you've got way worse guys on the, your roster right. than I. Right. Do you think it had anything to do with the color of your skin? Well, to be honest, I'm, I'm not one that usually beats that drum, but, you know, I do live in reality right. and I do know of other people that have been in that climate, yeah. you know, and things, you know, he's allegedly said, and, right. you know, we're grown ups, yeah. and this is, it's 2021. So it's reality. It I mean, let's face it. it. I mean, it, well, to be honest, I thought, okay, maybe you got enough black guys. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, but there were plenty on his roster. You know, I, I can't say that. Sure. That was a thing. I, I literally thought that. I thought, well, maybe he's got enough black well, guys. Well, I think it was a either. combination maybe of the fact that you, you did the WBF thing. And then in addition to that, he's like, well, how many, you know, he, he's thinking selling magazines, Joe, because Joe is a yes, businessman. Yes. I don't yes. think Joe is a racist. I think Joe is a businessman. And he yes. says, what's going to yes. sell more covers, David Durth or, or, or uh, Aaron Baker? And, and that's well, why David Durth had a contract. 
And according to one of his old quotes, you know, that that was the case. But that I'm not mad at anybody or it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. And even but in retrospect, I look and I go, wow. Had I in any way known that might have come that way, I would have been better prepared. Right. I was literally floored and shocked that that was the answer that I got. Right. So I, I was almost speechless. I, yeah. I, I, you know, you look back and you say, I could have, should have, this is what I should have said. And this is, I would have made this point. Right. It, it, it was bam. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? So, yeah, so yeah, and you, you probably didn't, I mean, you were one of the top guys at that time. So, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was exactly. Weird. And I, and, and I'm sure your placings got hurt because you didn't have a weeder contract because oh, yeah. back then oh, that was, you know, it doesn't exist now because there's no Joe weeder, but that definitely was, was dude. I knew by who was in the, let's see. Who's on the roster? I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm behind him. I'm <laughs> like, yeah. I, I was telling uh, sure. John and uh, and Rich, it was like like the bus. It's like, all right, who's here tonight? All right, Aaron Baker, you, you just stand right there. Like, Hold the bus up, you know. Like, all right, who's here? Are it you? was like yeah. that. People don't know that today, but that's what it was like when you work for Weeder. You you got the you know you get the nod. Now, you know, getting back to Vince for a second, I I talked to David Durth. Ray may he rest in peace, you know, before he oh, passed, man. obviously. And he said you guys were treated like rock stars, you know, when you oh. were over there. I mean, first class everything, right? See, in the beginning, and yeah. that's the beauty of it. We we all we both made this joke and we we would tell it in in uh interviews. You know, in the beginning, they'd send you a limo, you know, and take you to the uh the hotel and yeah. take you to Trump Towers. Yeah. Um, take you to the the large hotel to uh-huh. meet in the conference room to have a have a discussion um like when they were making the announcement that it was going to be drug tested it was back when hulk hogan was in the news and yeah, that and the screwed up unscrupulous yeah. goings on behind the scenes with referees and you know this whole sorted business yeah. so now vince has to address this this issue mm-hmm. of anabolics so he calls us in and he says well you know senator joe biden uh, you know as petition have uh, you know anabolics was it was elevated. it biden back then that's funny biden that's was <laughs> the man he was the one who did it he's the guy um, who's in trouble making now he's president yeah <laughs> and he doesn't even know he's president that's the I funny thing <laughs> <laughs> i felt like new you know it's like biden you know <laughs> newman no <Newman>. so <laughs> But yeah, so bad, you know, I've known that name since then, because he's the one that he's the reason why you had the USA that was drug tested. He's the reason that the first Iron Man was drug tested. And he ruined the WBF for Vince. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So he came and made a speech and said, you know, gentlemen, our next show will have to be drug tested. We are going to address this issue and we're going to show that we are compliant. We are policing our ranks, Mm -hmm. as it were. Yeah. You know, they may not have been as exact words, but that's in essence what he said. Um, so, you know, anyway. Um, oh, so that's what, uh, you know, Dave and I would say in the beginning, limousines. And so after the second show, which all of the, you know, you've got guys that learn how to peak. You know how to peak a certain way. You Imagine look, if someone. You looked just as good. You were the best one up there, I thought. Yeah, you and Stridham, you know. And Jimmy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I know I, I knew I wasn't going to get um, higher than where I was, but I was grateful to be in right, the Right, but, but just to, to explain to people, the WBF was like WWE wrestling at the time. Exactly. Right? So there was a storyline, you guys, supposedly right. were going to follow. So everyone kind of knew where they were going to place, but it was like Pretty the much. act and the, and the presentation. And it was, like, it, was, it was meant to be almost like wrestling, really. Which, y- yeah. We were characters, yeah. Major Guns, you know, yeah. Derek Angel, you know, uh, yeah. the giant killer. And it was okay. a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, I, we'd I, go to Europe to the FIBO and have the biggest booth there. You know what I mean? And just, I wish it would have continued. I think it would have made it. I really think it would have changed bodybuilding, you know. It, it really would have. And that's the real shame is, is the pawns on the chessboard suffered. Yeah. You know, in a war between two kings. Mm-hmm. The pawns suffer. Well, yeah, they would, go down saying, it would have only been good for bodybuilding because they would have kept Weeder and, and McMahon would have com- com- been competing against each other and they would have had to keep funneling more money into the athletes right. to keep trying right. to you know, beat the other guy. And I think that would have just, it could have made the sport huge in both It ends, really could have. You know, so. it, it could have also addressed a lot of the health concerns. Maybe it would have been approached um, in a more... Um, 
healthier manner. Maybe we could have combated some of the negative uh, stigmas involved and, and just arrived at better, more healthier right. ways to accomplish the same thing, yeah. you know, without all of the negative press that has occurred um, from abuse and what have you. But you abuse anything, yeah. you know, you're going to get the same result. Yeah. That, um, but Dave, Dave and I used to say, uh, towards the end, after that second show, yeah. now you had many people that came in uh, in not so good shape. No, because yeah. Mike Quinn was the worst, I think, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it was tough for, you know, for people that have learned to peak. They've peaked right. a certain way right. all their bodybuilding careers. Right. And then all of a sudden you have someone saying, well, here we have this gentleman here who's going to, he has a, he has a way. It's the high fat diet. And oh, this was way. Pasquale came yeah. in and yeah, was trying to yes. help you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and now I had just won the USA from a drug tested year. So you knew how to do it already. Yeah. Right. I took. Dave downtown. I said, come here, man. We're, we're going to. You got your herbs, your Chinese herbs. <laughs> yeah. So I, I put him on them. So that's he why. He that show, actually. He came in fifth. He made yeah. the top. Yeah. And we, you know, we celebrated. It was, it was <laughs> I remember that day when they, they uh, called us. Uh, we placed that night and then we had a big, had a huge uh, press conference afterwards. Yeah. And they called us up on stage and awarded us, you know. We had our, our medals on and everything. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was it was a... What was the reason they, Vince gave you guys for ending the league? Well, it was pretty, it was pretty self-explanatory. He didn't really call us in and say we're ending it. He really left it to Tom to kind of, you know, slowly, um, slowly kind of... Uh, let the news out. And we could you. feel the climate changing. I mean, okay, now here's the point I was coming to. Uh, In the beginning, mm -hmm. they sent limousines. Yeah. Towards the end, it's like, uh, oh yeah, uh, find your way to the airport, you know. Send so, us the receipt, yeah, send us the receipt. <laughs> we can see the, the handwriting on the wall change. Right. And just like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see you there, you know, just uh, yeah, that was, that wasn't find a your good, way. That definitely wasn't a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Now, David Dirt told me he partied like a maniac when he was in the WBF. You know, you know, did you, were you one of the guys that saved all their money like Jimmy Quinn or did you spend it all, you know, like when you were making I, it? No, I didn't make what Jimmy Quinn made. Oh, okay. And I didn't make what certain, but now, just when in the USA, you right. get offered an amount of money, which yeah. is more than you've ever seen in your life. Right. And you go, that's a great deal. I'm going to take it. And then you find out what others have been offered. Oh, so you weren't making as much as some of these other guys were. You didn't know better. No, I did. It did increase the second. Oh, it did? Okay. Uh, the second year. But, you know, uh, I didn't, I wasn't that savvy in that regard. I didn't have the experience. You were happy to get have, paid, period, probably. I was happy yeah, to get yeah. paid. <laughs> and you know what? It, it, was, it was a good amount of money. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, look. You get 50 grand for doing what you want to do. You know, 40 grand, 55. Yeah. You know, others started out well above that. Yeah, gotcha. You know, now if you're used to, and, and Linda McMahon, you know, um, did the negotiating. She's mm -hmm. an attorney, you yeah. know, she's a pistol, you know, very sharp woman. I actually did, I actually did a diet first. I, I know her very nicely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they, smart, and you but know sharp. What? Yeah, very sharp. Yeah. Very sharp. And um, it, it was then that I learned the word in perpetuity. Password <laughs> is in perpetuity. <laughs> they owned you, they owned you in perpetuity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? She always treated me well. I, I yeah. got along with everybody. Shane, um, you know, they were kids then. Shane I know. and Stephanie. Yeah. And uh, once he took us all over to the house and, you know, we were at the pool and just had just had a ball. Yeah, um, and then we were not. They're actually night. good people. Like I, I know them personally. They're they're yeah. really good. People don't realize they have a lot of money, but you would never know it. They don't act like they have a lot of money. You know. I have I have nothing bad to say. Yeah. You know about any. As a matter of fact, um, interestingly enough, after they 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 decided to make it a drug free competition. Yeah. Um, we had regular, um, unscheduled drug, drug tests. Right. Now, after the second competition, we were still, um, you know, locked to that policy. Right. Now, we heard from the grapevine, yeah. um, I'm not going to say who, 
But someone who understood our plight said, well, if I were you, I would start, you know, preparing, you know. To leave. I'd start preparing, <laughs> yeah. So, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. um, now, um, I did have the Chinese herbal thing, but you know, the background, but it was also time to cut losses and time to prepare, you know, right. for the IFBB. Yeah. So there was one test where our numbers were <laughs> not so low as they were. Oh, really? And so, so Vince stopped a check. Oh, so they used that as the, as the reason to cut you guys off? Well, no, no, I'm, I'm talking about two particularly oh. different readings. Oh, okay. You know, it's like, oh, your numbers have changed big time, yeah. you know, and, and I'm sure <laughs> Pasquale's like, okay, this guy's on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> but in fairness, um, I talked to my liaison. He put in a word for Vince, and Vince released the check. Oh, wow, now, that he, was nice. He didn't yeah. have to do that, and that meant the world to me, to, to someone like who was low on the totem pole. Right. And you know, you're trans, you're making a transition. Sure. You know, you need that money. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so, and it actually, I did a little bit of wrestling um, after I retired from bodybuilding. Oh, you did? I didn't know that. And, oh, yeah. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I wrestled with John Cena. We had a match. Oh, and, did you? Because uh, oh, John Cena oh, yeah. used to work at Gold's Gym, right? With, uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so John, him, John's right? a good guy. We, we had a good time and, and, and we do the independent shows and we put on shows each weekend. Oh, that's and, awesome. And, I didn't even know you did that. Just, that's funny. You know, a uh, shout out to Rick Bassman, who uh, ran uh, Ultimate University. And did, were just, you trying to get into wrestling? I mean, because you might have been good for that, I think. I actually uh, signed a, uh, a contract with um, <laughs> another federation that oh, didn't boy. last. Uh -huh. But I had a good payday and I had a lot of fun. I've got, I've got footage of it. Right. Um, it was one of those that uh, Russell Simmons had backed, and it was this, okay. this urban type of flair. So you had people from all different nations right. and all different types of characters and gimmicks. And, and so, so, but it, it, was, uh, it was one of those things. Um, I ended up tearing a bicep. Oh, that's, that, that was the end of that, yeah. It healed in 12 weeks. Ugh. I was released to train. Yeah. I got back, uh, got the bicep back. Right. You know, and that, you know, my first thought, Dave. What? Oh no, there goes my double biceps. Uh, yeah, of course. That's why I would think the same thing. It's yeah. a bodybuilder right there talking. Exactly. Like, I'm ruined. I'll never, I'll never right. crack a double again. Is that you know? why you got it? You stayed away from the wrestling. You said I don't want to get hurt. Well, here's the thing. Um, my wife at the time didn't. She didn't want me to go back into it. Mm -hmm. it and it's also not the best environment for relationships. It, it's hard. I'm sure. You know, it's hard on relationships. It, it takes a lot to- Traveling a lot too, right? You know, to gird it. So from that standpoint, I wasn't afraid to go back into it. It's mm -hmm. just that, okay, you could have to convince your wife to, to go back in. Right, and at right. the time, um, you know, we had other things to deal with. Gotcha. So um, I never went back in. But in retrospect, I look back and, and I realized that was probably the best thing for me. You, you would have been I, right up your alley. I mean, I'm shocked that Vince didn't even offer you something like, hey, uh, Aaron, I know, you, you know we're ending this league. You're interested in wrestling? Because I think you would have <laughs> like, been plugged right into that whole thing real easy. Well, you know what? I had a ball doing it. Um, I was in the training school for, what, two years, two or three years, and we were doing regular wrestling shows. So we were getting smoother and tighter. I was still green, you know, by, by, right. by any stretch, but coming along. And I think I had, a, with a little more time, could have been really smooth. Um, and I'd like to think I could have made it with the right tutelage, yeah. you know, and the right push in time. But maybe but you would have gotten hurt. Who knows? You know, and then. You know. Well, here's the thing about professional wrestling. It's not a question of if you get hurt. It's when. It's when. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm friends with Triple H. Obviously, dude's died. He, he, the guy tore a lot of muscles over the years, both quads, you know, the biceps, triceps. So, I mean, it, it, it's brutal it, on your body. And I think as bodybuilders, we, we love ourselves so much that we. It's like, it's like, even though you know you can make a good living and you probably right. be very popular, is it worth sacrificing your body? And I think for you, I don't know, you could speak for, I, I don't think it would be for you. Because well, here's the thing. I didn't, that's not what stopped me from going back in. I, my wife expressed that she really, you know, please don't go back in, you know. 
Now, it was a dream of mine to do it, and I did it, and I was good enough to get signed, and right. I had a lot of fun with it. Right. Um, but at the time, it, it, just other things were more important. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, looking at the way the business works, mm -hmm. the climate of it, it's a very cutthroat I'm sure. business. I'm sure. And it's how would I have fared in that climate? Would I have subjected myself to it? You know, and many people don't, they cut their losses, whatever. Yeah. But I look at it from this perspective and I realize it, it was probably for the better. Yeah. Well, everything happens I think it was just yeah, God that, so. steering me in the opposite direction. Right. Yeah. You know, I'd had a taste of it, got to realize another goal and, um, but knowing what I know about the business and, and you know, and what it entails and yeah. not, and, you know, not Vince, it's just the business itself, what it requires. Um, so, and, and I learned some of that even uh, on the amateur level when I was doing independent wrestling, coming up the ranks, gotcha. you know, you get sick, you're expected to, to go. You got to show up. Yep. But I've got the flu. Doesn't matter. You're champion. Get out of bed. Yeah. You know, and like, <laughs> <laughs> but I just threw up. We'll clean it up and get, you know, That's so. A, the show it, must go the, on. You know that, Aaron. That's it, I was thing. just going to say that. Now, at, how did you uh, eventually segue out of bodybuilding? What made you decide, all right, I had enough? You know, a lot of guys stay in it way too long. You kind of left when you were still, you know, really good. Um, what major event, you know, transpired where you said, you know what? That's it. I'm done with bodybuilding. Well, um, I separated uh, from my wife uh, maybe a month or so, or three weeks maybe, before the 98 Olympia. Right. And um, so here I am beginning to enter peak weeks. Mm -hmm. um, biggest show, best shape, most muscle I've ever had. Right. Trying to dial in, moved out of the house, was in a hotel. Ugh, um, terrible completely distraught trying to continue right. and hold it together um was she sick so, of, was she like sick of the bodybuilding is that why you broke up or was it for a different reason no it was it was a number of things um and it's never one person you know so sure, of course it's just in in from a maturity standpoint and looking back at um, who we were and who we weren't um you know you do the best you can based on who you are sure, at that time of course and um, so if you don't learn from it, then then it's in vain. Um, but at that time, it, you know, I went through the motions and, and did the best I could gotcha. and showed up off. And I, I look at the footage from that show and I go, my goodness, I think I had more muscle in this show than any other show. And you had been look third at, at the Ironman earlier in the year. Say again? You had been third at the Ironman in the beginning of that year, right? Hmm. No, this was 98. I have it in my, in my notes here that you were third at the Ironman, seventh at the Arnold that year. Is that, 98? Is that not true? Hmm. No. Okay. That, uh, no. I was sixth in the Arnold at, I think it was 1996. 95 I, or 96. I have 98, Arnold Classic, seventh place, Ironman third. I don't know. And Olympia did to, not place, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Tomato, tomato, tomato yeah. you know. <laughs> So you're saying it was an off? It was a it was a terrible year because of the relationship end. Yeah, uh, of '98, okay. and and you know at that time I think I was just tired. You yeah. know what I mean? I just sure. didn't have the focus at that time. Um, and even retiring, it it. Now I also came across an opportunity to train at Ultimate University that Rick Bassman um, mm -hmm. used to run. Right, and that's something I I always wanted to. Uh, to do professional wrestling, even as a kid, right? Even sure. along with professional bodybuilding, sure. so it wasn't just this thing of "Hey, I think I'll try this now." Right. It was like, "Hey, here's an opportunity to go to school," gotcha. you know. And so I did that for a while, for about three years. Mm -hmm. um, ended up landing um, a fairly lucrative contract for my experience, uh, and you know, and the timing and and all, but you know, wasn't bad at all for a, a first contract. Sure. And I had fun doing what I wanted to do. How long until did you do that for? Say again? How long did you, did you do that for? About three years. Okay. Yeah. 
And is that why you made the come? You, you made a comeback, I think, right in 03? Yes. Yeah. So I think between two, between uh, 99, 2000. So it was like 98, 99, yeah. 2000. I was uh, wrestling. Um, and then I came back in uh, 2003. And I've stayed in shape. I right. mean, I still train hard and regularly. And, uh, you know, I kept saying, no, I'm not going to compete. No, you're competing. You're, there, no one looks <laughs> like this. You're, you're competing. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling. Yeah. No, no, I'm over here. I'm wrestling, yeah. you know. And then I decided I'm going to come out of uh, retirement. I'm right. going to... I'm going to go for that, uh, that master's Olympia. Okay. And, um, I thought, you know what? I can win that. I don't think anybody at, at 42 looks, looks like me right now. Sure. And I, and Vince had won it a few times. And right. then later on I, I heard, well, he's not doing it this year. I'm like, good Vince, you go ahead. You take a rest. You, you've earned it. <laughs> Is that what he Just lost? Right I down. think he had lost and he was mad. Right. Cause he lost to like Don Youngblood. Is that what it was? Ah, ah, okay. Okay. See, I didn't have the backstory. I, I just, think that's, I think that was the story behind it. So okay. yeah, hmm, that, I'm sure that was a pretty yeah. big upset, you know, yeah. because it was raining, raining champ. Yeah. I don't but, know if he, but so I went looking for a contract. I, I went to the Arnold, mm -hmm. uh, no, not the Arnold, but the Arn, uh, Olympia. Right. Decided to, uh, go to Vegas, make the announcement that I was indeed coming out of retirement. Um, <laughs> stayed up, stayed there. And I was still kind of in the world, you know, I was yeah. still very much uh, in the world, um, of train hard, work hard, party hard. Yeah. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, you remember that weekend you know, so, uh, <laughs> you back when the Craig Titus parties. Oh, <laughs> 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 you notice I just stopped right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was back in those days. I guess. Um, so. Wow. Yeah. 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 Those are crazy. But uh, anyway, made the announcement, signed autographs, had a had a good time, went back, did the Arnold. I'm sorry, the um, Iron Man. Um, missed the peak. Peaked that night. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just one of those things. Um, but the contract that I was waiting for didn't come through. Uh, so um, the money wasn't there, huh? No, no. So that was the, the whole point of splashing back and then getting some uh, backing mm -hmm. um, to do the, the Mr. Olympia. Right, right. So the just, the so Masters you never, you Olympia. just never did it, huh? I just never did it. Yeah. So. And then no more desire to, to get back on stage. What, what, what changed in your life? Something had to have happened at that point. Something definitely happened. Um, everything slowed down. I actually stopped. Um, and I was, I was wondering what was going to be next. I kind of backed up and stopped mm -hmm. and a chain of events began to happen um, in my life where I was, beginning to hear what I hadn't been hearing before. Mm -hmm. I was, I had grown up Christian, but I had been not practicing. Gotcha. I'd been backslidden, pulled out mm -hmm. in the divorces. You know, there's no uh, reason for it, but the, the divorces, instead of drawing towards God, I just kind of fill those holes with the world. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you found so, God, basically, is, you know, is what you're saying. Huh, say again. You found God. God came into your life at that point. Well, yeah. yeah. He, he uh, had just had a major encounter. Mm -hmm. And it, it, there's certain events that led to it that on the, the appointed day and time, I had a major encounter that just drastically just changed everything. I mean, there's no way I could have been the same guy after that. Gotcha. You know, and there, there's an expression that Mike Tyson made uh, famous. You know, they asked him about a plan one time. I you remember. may know this. And he says, yeah, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. That's right. That's right. So, and that's how it was with God. So there's many people that they call themselves Christians or they believe in God or whatever. And, but that doesn't, without a transformation, then you're basically not. Hmm. People say, oh, I don't go to church because there's so many hypocrites there. 
Well, the, the Greek word for hypocrite actually means actor. Interesting. Yeah. Think about that. So in many people, you know, it, they can have a distaste for someone that says they're one thing and, and sure. lives another. And, and to people's credit, many people do the best they can under their own strength. Right. Well, a lot of people go to the gym, but not everyone's a bodybuilder, even though a lot exactly. of people call themselves bodybuilders because they don't really, exactly. they don't live the lifestyle outside the gym, right? They don't eat the food. Exactly. They don't get the rest. They don't do it, everything they got to practice the posing. So they're, they're pretending when they go to the gym, basically. Exactly. And you know yourself, there are people that go, oh yeah, I used to be as big as you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> or, or they go, yeah, I competed in this and I won this show. And you know, within a few syllables, Yeah. They don't know what my uncle, about. he was bigger than you. I said, he was, I said, I was like 320 yeah. pounds. I said, uh, ex exactly. <laughs> so the same thing with, with people that live, um, see without the, without the encounter, there's no transformation. Sure. You, you know, want, and you want to share your encounter? Or is that something like private? You know, that you don't, well to do it justice, it would take time to set up. Okay. Um, and then it would be so, apparent and the handwriting is on the wall. I mean, right. I could say what I heard and the bottom line is, you know, God spoke to me. Right. So what are you and, doing with this new, you know, revelation since you've found God? What, what have you, how has your life changed? Like, what are you doing today with yourself now? Well, what happened then was everything changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I quit chasing women. I quit like a lot of things that were part of my lifestyle. Right that I would try to fill up this God shaped hole. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing that'll fill that hole. And most of us, you know, we grab onto other idols just to make it through the day, make sure. it through the night. Right. Um, so when that happened, man, I was so wrecked that there's no way that I could have stayed the same. Mm. I moved to Hawaii and wow. see when you have something that uh, major, especially if it's of a spiritual nature right. to the rest of the world, you look crazy. I'm sure. It's like, like, what in the world happened to him? Uh, and I heard all kinds of rumors. You know, I was off in Hawaii living in a cave. Um, oh, I, I joined a cult. You know, I, you know it's, it's, I heard like, what? All these weird things. It was probably the oh, same the, cave they found Robbie Robinson, right? When he won the Masters Nationals. <laughs> he's, he's living at the top of a mountain in that's Tibet right. now. That's right. <laughs> you know, but I, I just, uh, just surrendered everything. Sure. You know, you, you can't. You can't get anywhere without surrender. Right. And it's, so that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. It's like, you can call yourself one thing mm -hmm. just because you go to church doesn't make you a son. Gotcha. Doesn't make you a true Christian because a true Christian is not about religion. There's countless religions. Sure. But what happened was a, an encounter caused a relationship that I'd never had. Mm -hmm. And it sparked an intimacy that I'd never had. Mm -hmm. Did you, so you don't get you changed. Felt it, you felt empowered oh. by that, obviously, as well. Oh, my goodness, dude. Even now, it's like what I do now, which I'll, I'll get into, is the supernatural lifestyle. Mm -hmm. the, the things that I see every day on a daily basis is just still never ceases to amaze me. Mm -hmm. So um, I see legs grow back out. I see people healed. Um, I see, um, and see, when, when I had that encounter, my eyes were opened. Mm -hmm. I remember walking into Gold's gym one day to train after this. And I walked in about four feet inside the door and I looked up and I saw so much darkness in that place. I'm sure. That I went, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I turned around and I, and I didn't go back until maybe 2018. That's Just funny. recently, I went back and, right, right. you know, and uh, saw my pals and, uh, you know, yeah. as a different person, but See, I had this veil over my eyes before then. Sure. And, you know, that's not all I saw once the veil came off. I saw things, you know, in my apartment that were there because I had invited them there, you know, right. through my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it never ceases to be uh, amazing, you know, and it's not all about goosebumps. It's, it's also just about knowing it's an intimacy. Mm -hmm. So you can't really even can't really belong to God without the intimacy. Otherwise you're doing the best you can under your own power. And people don't change by working on their character. They change by the intimacy with him. 
So you basically surre- you-, you surrendered to him is what you uh, said. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's a word I wrote down. Surrendered. Mm-hmm. It's like, how are you gonna have a king if you won't get off the throne? Right. Right. And for years, you know, I I knew who I was, I knew what I believed. Um, I had no doubts about it, but it was different when he showed up. Yeah. Interesting. Very cool. So yeah, what I'm do you do? So tell us what you're doing now. I'm so excited so, to hear what this is. So, so I'm in ministry um, full time, do quite a, a few things. Um, I, uh, I counsel during the week. I'm counseling. I'm teaching. I'm preaching. I'm speaking at conferences. Where are you living now, by the way? I forgot to ask I'm you. in uh, Seattle, Seattle, okay. Washington. Um, speaking at conferences, um, I'm connected to an orphanage in uh, Honduras, um, Impact Ministries, mm-hmm. and um, good friend of mine, um, Tom Stammen, uh, built an orphanage about eight years ago in Honduras, and now it's a city. Wow. And it's a, they grow mangoes and pigs and tilapia and, and everything, and it just keeps increasing. That's and awesome. so they sustain themselves by what they produce, and then they sell it on the market to Honduras and it helps benefit the city. Cool. They also build safe houses uh, in the States and all over the world uh, that rescues uh, um, battered wives and child trafficking uh, victims. Mm-hmm. Um, so I go out once a week and I pray for people. Mm. So, and I watch God do crazy miracles. Cool. And, and some of that's on the internet as well. Um, but backs healed, legs grow out, legs that are an inch shorter grow out right before your eyes and things like that. They never get old. So I live a supernatural lifestyle. That's awesome. Which just, when I say that, some will think I'm deluded. Of course they're going to think you're crazy because it it sounds crazy, but but I I believe you. I I truly believe you. I know you do. And that's, that's the fun part is, oh yeah, I sound as crazy, but some think I'm deluded, some think I'm mistaken, but others get it Hmm. others know exactly what i'm talking about and they know um that i don't even have to uh convince anybody question is even as i speak now there are certain people whose hearts are being touched by what i'm saying because all you have to do is look at the world and what's going on right now and you realize there's a lot of darkness there and if there's a lot of darkness you know that there's light and there's enough light so that that's what my and, I, and from time to time I will still, uh, you know, help someone with a competition, with a diet or sure. posing, bring up a body part, because you know once you're a fan, you you never uh, stop. You love it, yeah. I mean, do you counsel bodybuilders? Like, let's say a guy is is feeling lost or something like that. Is that something that you if people wanted to contact you and then talk? Oh to yeah. You? Oh yeah, I do a lot of that. A lot okay. see deliverance, um, you name it, because awesome. there's always a need. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we've all been through things. Bondage is bondage, whether it's drugs, whether it's lust, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, you know. Um, and, it, and it's not about religion. You know, you can work out religiously, as we both know. Sure. But that doesn't bring you any closer to God. It doesn't. No, I mean, bodybuilding is a lot about overcompensation for other sure. emotional, you know, stuff sure. that we got going on. And we all know that. I mean, come on. But how many. The- Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I was going to say, but to get to that next, to pass that and to get past that, it, you know, that takes time and it has to, it, it, like you said, it, it does require surrender. A lot of us are such control freaks that we can't do that. And so until you are ready to do that, you, you're not going to change anything in your life, you know? Exactly. Exactly. You know, that was the first thing that I realized is that even being, growing up being a believer, I never gave God my, I never gave him a hundred percent. Just like bodybuilding, you know, the rules are simple. You do the work, you train hard, you you match your nutrition, you toe the line, you do what it requires, and you will yield the fruit. And it's the same, you know, in your spiritual walk. But so many of us want to see Jesus doesn't date. <laughs> and so if you're in a relationship with someone and it is basically a marriage to God, yeah. Yeah. you know, but you were like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm with you. But I'm going to take this old girlfriend out. She's only going to be in town for the weekend. <laughs> then I'll be home. <laughs> then I'll be yours. You know, yeah. so the cool part is, you know, God does the heavy lifting. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you surrender, 
and and I used to think, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the, one of these boring Christians. I'm going to be, oh man, I'm not going to yeah. laugh. I'm gonna, uh, you know, what will I do without this and that? Wow. Right. Pff, was I wrong? <laughs> was I wrong? It's I probably the, laughed It's more. the greatest high that people could even imagine. They just don't realize it because no one wants to go to that place because it's sometimes it's scary for people, I think, you know. Well, exactly. And it's like it's like the book Green Eggs and Ham, mm -hmm. which I probably be like shout it down with arrows for mentioning a Dr. Seuss book. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's like green eggs and ham. It's like all through the book. This guy is like, I will not eat green eggs and ham. I will not eat them. Sam, I am. I will not eat them with a mouse. I will not eat them in a house, you know. <laughs> and then finally he breaks down. Oh, dude. All right, fine. And he eats the green right. eggs and ham. And then you see that picture of his face. You know, he's <laughs> like, this is the bomb. Yeah. You know, you just see like these intensity coming from his head. Sure. You know, his face. Then he's got his arm around the dude walking with, walking with <laughs> Sam. <laughs> so for years, you know, I fought and I, I clung to a lot of things that, that, you know, give you short lived pleasure, right. you know, but they don't give you peace. Yep. There's so many, I've trained billionaires that have a lot of money, but they don't have peace. No, it's, it's scary, and right? You, People think money brings you peace. It doesn't. Sometimes it makes you, brings you more aggravation, you know? And it also exposes who you are, you yeah, know? Yeah. It, uh. it, it's not going to. But, but then again, money is not evil either. I think a lot of people. No, 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 no. It's no. one or the other. You, you could have everything. You could, if you find balance, you can have it all, you know, I think. It, it, exactly. And that's another scripture people misquote. Well, well, you know, uh, money is the root of all evil. The Bible doesn't say that. It says <laughs> the love of money is the root. Right. Because the love of money yeah. is what people will cut people's throat for. They will rob, steal, yeah. lie, yeah. kill. True, true. Very That's true. another idol that you bow down to. Mm -hmm. You're right. And, you know, at the, at, the, at the risk and sacrifice of your marriage or your children or your personal relationships or family. Or family. How many yeah. families have broken up over money? Come on, that's the number one reason. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. I tell you, peace is a higher currency. You know, Absolutely. It, it, it's like, and I see you at peace a lot. You know, I've watched some of your, your interviews and, you know. Yeah. It you, took a long got, time, though. It was a long process to get to that point, though, too. Yeah. Because we're hard headed. We're so stubborn. We know it all. Yeah. Well, yeah, Gotta, exactly. The, you know, the first, you know, when I was. 22 i thought i knew everything you know, i went to medical school i went to college you know i'm i you, I was, you went to what school i went to medical school i mean so i, oh, think cool. I know everything right, I, right. You know, i'm a genius you know I, I i no one's had this level of education but i knew nothing you know i just knew facts i didn't know i didn't have any any awareness or any kind of like connection to anything and that's so you're talking about knowledge without wisdom that's right it took a long yeah, time a lot. for me to, 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 to learn that though but Man. uh because you know knowledge is is powerful in this society but it doesn't find like you said you don't find peace with that you don't find mm. happiness with that it's so you have to find the balance between the two and that and that let's again I, i'm a slow learner i admit that i took me a long yeah, time we, we all do and there's a lot of uh extremely bright people that you know, they relegate it to, oh, yeah, that's that's good for you. That's your crutch. And that's, you yeah. know, and they don't realize that the very thing that stops them from receiving that truth is the fact that they're blocking the doorway Yeah, because sure. they're clinging to this. And and even certain people that that are believers, they subscribe to what they think. And God's not really interested in what you think. Yeah, It's like if you're willing to, to receive truth and you move out of the way, it'll mm -hmm. hit you right in the face, and then you're, oh, wow, I never dreamed. Yeah, amen so, to that, man. Aaron, yeah. thank you so much today for sharing all that with us and sharing your life with us, and I think people will have a much greater perspective of who you are as a person and you know what you went through to get where you are, and I think it's, it's amazing. If people want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Right now, you can reach me on Facebook. Um, there's a few Instagram posts out there um, we're starting up been... your Instagram. We're going to get that going. <laughs> Say that again. So we're going oh, to get Instagram that going because yeah. I've got some great shots of Aaron's um, an artist. Just... We got pictures. We're going to get, we're going to get him to put up all this stuff because we want to follow it, you. Yeah. I'll be the first just... guy to follow you. You send that link to me. <laughs> Bet. Bet. I want to be number one. 
All right. All right. I'm write that down. <laughs> number two behind God. God will be number one. Number <laughs> He's already got the address. Right, right. I don't want to. I don't want to move in on his territory. Aaron, <laughs> thank you so much. Seriously, I had a, a really great time talking to you today, and uh, uh, you know. I only wish you the greatest luck uh, the rest of your life, you know, because you're doing Thank some you. great stuff. You're really helping a lot of people. And I think that uh, we need more people like you out there. Thank you. It's, I'm, I'm having a blast, man. All right, lots guys. of peace, lots of joy. Yeah. But good to see you, man. I'm glad. And how's Amanda? Is it Amanda? Yeah, my wife is doing great. We got three you doing well? young kids. In the kids? Good deal. Yeah, they're keeping us busy, you know, keep you young. Yes. <laughs> Very good, man. All right, Well, guys. thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. My pleasure. That, guys, All this right. is going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With. I am Dave Palumbo. We will see you next time.